Today we're going to be solving questions 26 and 27, and this is from the SAT number 17. This is the April QAS test from 2019. And the first thing we should notice is that questions 26 and 27 are paired questions. And basically what this means is that the best way to solve these is to start by reading the question for 26, and then going through the answer choices for 27, picking one of these answer choices, and then using that in turn to answer question 26. And the second thing that we should notice about this is this little phrase here, reasonably be inferred. And you'll notice that I don't put too much emphasis on inference questions or implications, anything like that, because I don't think that it changes the structure of the question too much. I don't think it changes how we approach it or how we solve it. What it does do is it sort of signals to us that we may need to look a little bit deeper, a little further below the surface than we typically do. And we're still not going to make any assumptions. We're still not going to invent or add anything into the text that's not there or make any, make any connections that aren't appropriate. But it will tell us that we may have to do a little bit of logical thinking to make that connection to make everything work. So it can most reasonably be inferred from the passage that the nutrient requirements of many plants have the consequences of something. So to solve this, what we need to do is look through the answer choices for 27, and we're going to look for a text or a line that's going to tell us about the nutrient requirements of many plants. So let's see if we can do that. Let's start with line 16 through 21. So that is right here. And this says that Matthew Kluster from Harvard University and colleagues empirically investigated whether the dried bracts, specialized leaves on a rare woodland plant, Monotropsis odorata, might serve a similar purpose as the stripes on a tiger or the gray coloration of the wings of the peppered moth, namely to hide. And what this sentence is telling us is basically giving us the research question um, of Matthew Kluster, basically what he was trying to figure out, what he was trying to find. What this doesn't do is doesn't really tell us anything about the nutrient requirements of plants. Um, so for that reason, I don't think it's a good answer choice. All it's doing is sort of explaining the question that Matthew Kluster wanted to investigate. So let's get rid of that. Then we have 22 through 25, which is right here. And this says Monotropsis odorata is a fascinating plant species as it relies exclusively on upon this fungus that associates with its roots for all of the resources it needs to live, notes Kluster. So this is telling us specifically about this plant, Monotropsis odorata, and basically how all it uses to, to, to eat, or basically all of its resources come from this one fungus. So this is telling us something about the nutrients, about a single plant. It's not really telling us about many plants, but it sort of is in the right ballpark. So for now, I would just keep it. Then we have lines 25 through 30. And 25 through 30 say... Because this plant no longer requires photosynthetic pigmentation, i.e. green coloration, to produce its own energy, it is free to adopt a broader range of possibilities in coloration, much like fungi or animals. So this is an interesting answer choice here because what's going on is that this is contrasting other plants with Monotropsis, Monotropsis odorata. So basically because this specific plant doesn't require photosynthesis, does it need photosynthesis for its resources, all it needs is this fungus. Basically what that does is it allows it to adopt a broader range of possibilities in coloration because those plants that do need photosynthesis, they need a certain pigmentation, i.e. green coloration. So here we have a comparison between this specific plant and other plants and we're talking about basically the differences between how they get their nutrients and basically what the effects of that are. So both of these are pretty good. Let's keep C as well for right now. Then we have D which references lines 31 through 34. And that says, using a large population of Monotropsis odorata, Kluster and colleagues experimentally removed the dried bracts that cover the three to five centimeter tall stems and flower buds of these woodland plants. So this is talking more about the methodology that Matthew Kluster used in his study. And it's not really telling us anything about how these plants get nutrients. So for that reason, I don't think this is a good answer choice. Let's get rid of D. So now we have B and C that we're left over with. And again, let's see if we can eliminate one of these before going back to 26. So we want to choose the one that most directly tells us about the nutrient requirements of many plants. So looking between these, the main thing that I notice is that this first sentence here for answer choice B is only talking about Monotropsis odorata. All it's doing is telling us that it gets all of its resources from a fungus. The next sentence, however, kind of brings in the broader spectrum of plants because saying it's, per it's specifying this specific plant no longer requires photosynthetic pigmentation to produce its own energy. It's free to adopt. So this sort of references in, in 
in an implied way, right, or in an inferential way, it sort of is bringing in other plants. And what it's saying about other plants is that they do require photosynthetic pigmentation, so they are green. And basically what that does is it make, gives them a more narrow range of possibilities in their coloration. So for that reason, I think that C is a much better answer choice than B because B really only focuses on this specific plant here. It doesn't really talk in general about all the other plants. So one more time, we know that C is our answer and what it tells us about other plants or about many plants and the nutrient requirements is that their nutrient requirements, um, their necessity to have to do photosynthesis basically means one, that they're, they're green, but two, that they have a more narrow range of possibilities and coloration. So let's see if we have an answer choice that will match that. So for A, 26 says that the consequence is that it exaggerates the plant's coloration patterns. So this is basically saying that these plants that need photosynthesis, their plant coloration patterns are exaggerated. And I don't think that that really matches too well what we're told here, which is that basically the possibilities of their coloration, that range is narrowed, not that they have more, what is it? Not that they have more exaggerated patterns. So maybe it's true, but it doesn't really match what we're saying here. So narrowing, narrowing of the range of possibilities is not the same as exaggerating their patterns. B says limiting the plant's defensive options. So I think that this is pretty good because we have the sense of narrowing with limiting. And then the plant's defensive options basically means that it's not able to use camouflage like the other plant that we're looking at is. And I think that makes sense because in the context we're talking about camouflage. So because it has a more narrow range of possibilities and coloration, a lot of plants are not able to use camouflage like Monotrosis odorata. So for that reason, I think this is a strong answer choice. Let's keep it. C says that this, uh, the nutrient requirements of many plants, they basically increase that plant's energy consumption. So maybe this is true because these other plants, these many plants are using photosynthesis, so maybe they have higher energy consumption. However, the text doesn't really mention this. It doesn't really make this connection for us. So we're not able to, uh, to make that inference. So we don't know for sure that be just because they're using photosynthesis or whatever, that they have higher energy consumption. So I would give it a C. D says that the nutrient requirements of many plants have the consequence of narrowing the plant's potential habitats. So this would basically be because certain plants have nutrient requirements or because certain plants they need to conduct photosynthesis, that that's going to limit the, the, the range of potential habitats that the plant can live in. But that's not really what's being said. What's being narrowed, what's being limited is the range of possible coloration patterns, not anything about their habitats. So let's get rid of D, which is going to leave us with answer choice B which is our correct answer for question 26, and answer choice C, which is our correct answer for question 27.